हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू अनदर सीरीज ऑफ माइंड मैप टुडे टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज एनएचआरसी एच दैट इज नेशनल ह्यूमन राइट्स कमीशन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द टॉपिक देन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल प्रोविजन फंक्शन एंड वर्किंग ऑफ द कमीशन लिमिटेशन एंड वे फॉरवर्ड सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स डिस्कस अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द टॉपिक एन एच आर सी ऑफ इंडिया इज एन इंडिपेंडेंट स्टेटरी बॉडी एस्टेब्लिश ऑन ट्वेल्व अक्टूबर नाइनटीन नाइन थ्री एज पर प्रोविजन ऑफ प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ ह्यूमन राइट एक्ट नाइनटीन नाइनटी थ्री इट वॉज एस्टेब्लिश इन कन्फॉर्मिटी विद द पेरिस प्रिंसिपल्स इट वॉज एडोप्टेड फॉर द प्रमोशन एंड प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ ह्यूमन राइट इन पेरिस इन अक्टूबर नाइनटीन नाइनटी वन इट इज द वॉच डॉग ऑफ ह्यूमन राइट्री इट वर्क फॉर राइट रिलेटेड टू लाइफ लिबर्टी इक्वालिटी and dignity of the individual guaranteed by indian constitution now moving on to the constitutional provisions first is composition nhrc is a multi member body which includes a chairman and five full time members in addition to these it has seven ex officio members the chairpersons of national commission of minorities national commission for scheduled caste national commission for scheduled tribes national commission for women national commission for backward classes national commission for protection of child rights and chief commissioner for persons with disabilities next is qualification the chairman shall be retired chief justice of india or a judge of supreme court two full time members should be serving or retired judge of the supreme court or a serving or retired chief justice of a supreme court other three members should be having knowledge or practical experience with respect to human rights also out of these three full time members one should be women appointment the chairperson and members of the nhrc are appointed by the president of india they are appointed on the consultation of a six members committee which includes prime minister chairperson home minister leader of opposition in the lok sabha leader of opposition in the rajya sabha speaker of the lok sabha and deputy chairman of the rajya sabha term of office and removal the chairman and members hold office for a term of 3 years or until they attain the age of 70 years whichever is earlier after their tenure the chairman and members are not eligible for further employment under the central or state government however they are eligible for reappointment the chairman and members can be removed from the office by the president under the following circumstances if they are adjudged an insolvent if they engage in any paid employment outside the duties of his office if they are unable to continue office by reason of infirmity of body or mind if they are of unsound mind stands so declared by a competent court if they are convicted and sentenced to imprisonment for an offence the president can also remove the chairman and members on the ground of proved misbehavior or incapacity now let's discuss about functions and working of the commission functions of national human rights commission are to investigate any violation of human rights or negligence in the prevention of such violation by a public servant such violations can be investigated either suo motu or on complaint to it or on an order of a court to intervene in any proceedings involving an allegation of violation of human rights pending before a court to visit jails and detention centers to inquire about the living conditions of inmates to review the constitutional provisions and other legal safeguards for the protection of human rights and recommend appropriate measures to study international treaties and other instruments on human rights and to spread awareness about human rights among the people now let's discuss about working of national human rights commission the headquarters of the commission is at delhi The commission is vested with the powers to regulate its own procedures. It has all the powers of a civil court and its proceedings have a judicial character. The commission has its own investigating staff and is also empowered to utilize services of any officer or agency of the center or state. The commission can look into a matter within 1 year of its occurrence. The commission may take the following steps during or upon the completion of an inquiry. recommend to the concerned body for the payment of compensation or damages to the victim recommend to the concerned body for the initiation of proceedings for prosecution or any other action against the guilty public servant recommend to the concerned body for the grant of immediate interim relief of the victim 
and approached the Supreme Court or High Court concerned for the necessary directions, orders or writs. The Commission submits its annual report to the central and the state governments concerned. These reports are laid before the respective legislators along with a memorandum of the actions taken or the recommendations of the commissions. Now let's have a look at the limitations. There are various powers bestowed upon the commission. However, due to several reasons, the commission is unable to execute the role provided to them in an effective manner. The main limitations are the commission is not empowered to inquire into any matter after the expire of one year from the date on act on violation. The commission has no power to punish the violators of human rights or to award any relief including monetary relief to the victim. The recommendations of the commission are not binding on the concerned government or authority. The commission also has a limited role, power and jurisdiction in case of human rights violation by the member or armed forces. Violation of human rights by private parties cannot be considered under NHRC jurisdiction. Now lastly, let's discuss about the way forward. To overcome these limitations which hampers working of Human Rights Commission, some steps must be initiated such as the recommendations made by the Commission should be made enforceable, members of NHRCs should include civil society, human rights activists, etc. NHRC should have its independent investigating staff recruited by itself rather than present practice of deputation. And the limit time of one year must not be used in a rigid manner, rather some flexibility should be allowed depending upon the case. Now it's time for the practice questions. First of all, note down the prelims based question. Who amongst the following are included in the appointing committee of NHRC chairman and members? 1. Leader of opposition in the Lok Sabha 2. Prime Minister 3. Deputy Chairman of the Rajya Sabha 4. Law Minister Choose the correct options 1 and 2 only, 2 and 4 only, 1, 2 and 3 only or 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now moving on to the main question. Critically examine the role of the National Human Rights Commission in protecting and promoting human rights in India. So that's all for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.